Now going to move on to the matter of urgency as moved by Senator David Pocock. Senators, if you're not participating in this debate, please leave the chamber quietly. Dear President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I give notice that today I propose to move that, in the opinion of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The climate and health risks from the middle arm development will receive $1.5 billion in Commonwealth funding. Noting the project's proponents have confirmed it will be used as a major processing and manufacturing centre for gas fracked out of the Beedaloo Basin rather than the Sustainable Development Precinct, the Commonwealth and Northern Territory governments have falsely claimed. Also noting that the expansion of the fossil fuel industry is contrary to the advice and warnings from the International Energy Agency, IPCC and UN. Is the proposal supported? Thank you. Um, with the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips, and I call Senator Pocock. Thank you, President. I, I move, move the motion. In 2022, Australians voted for climate action. They voted against the shameless promotion of fossil fuels in a climate crisis. It is here. We are seeing the effects of climate change. The 2019-2020 bushfires will be seared into Australians' memories. We look at what's happening in Canada. This is the new normal. We are entering a climate that is unprecedented, that is not well suited to support humanity. Yet we have a new government that continues to back the fossil fuel subsidies of the Morrison government. The most problematic of these decisions is the $1.5 billion for what they're now trying to call the Middle Arm Sustainable Development Precinct. But let's be very clear. Middle Arm is far from sustainable. The, the driving force behind the whole development is gas extracted from new fields in the Beedaloo, and maybe Barossa, uh, maybe other offshore projects. And yet the details of why and how this decision was made remain shrouded in secrecy. And some of what has happened is truly bizarre. I asked the Department of Infrastructure and Infrastructure Australia if they were aware that the whole site at Middle Arm will likely be underwater by 2100. They had not even considered this risk. So why is this going ahead? How much of this precinct will be driven by gas projects? And what studies have been done to consider the potentially horrific health impacts that will flow from a petrochemical plant so close to Darwin? We just don't know. We don't know how much this has been looked at. I've been asking questions about the project in estimates. The Environment and Communications uh, References Committee, chaired by Senator Hanson Young, has considered the issue uh, as part of an inquiry into the oil and gas exploration and production in the Beedaloo Basin. And in fact, they saw it fit uh, that, the, um, that there be a separate inquiry into the project. And I look forward to the government supporting that inquiry uh, and participating uh, in it. One thing is clear is that federal funding from, for Middle Arm is, become to, is so that it be, can become a gas processing um, and export hub will be bad for the climate and bad for the health of Darwin residents. The Beedaloo Basin, according to the Northern Territory Government, has 500 trillion cubic feet of gas. That's the equivalent of 3,177 years of household use in Australia. It is just extraordinary the scale of these projects that Labor is promoting, that Labor is using our money to fund when we know the International Energy Agency are clear. The IPCC is clear. The UN is urging countries, particularly developed countries like Australia, to stop expanding our fossil fuel industry. You're going to hear from Labor that we need gas for the transition, and this is about jobs and development. You'll hear from the coalition that this is about creating a new industry in the Northern Territory. What good is a new industry in the Northern Territory when Darwin and other parts of the NT will likely be unlivable within the next 70 years if we continue down this path. 
unlivable. You look at the heat, you look at the humidity, there are a number of peer-reviewed papers saying that large parts of the NT, if we continue down this path of expanding fossil fuels, humans will not be able to live there. The immediate health impacts on people in Darwin look dire. From, we have a huge amount of research from the US looking at uh, Cancer Alley there, the notorious section of the Mississippi River where petrochemicals have led to the deterioration of so many communities in the area. There's 2,000 papers published on this topic and we know that the processing of the gas in the heart of Darwin will cause increased cardiovascular disease, asthma presentations, leukemias, pregnancy complications, congenital birth defects, stillbirths, and generally high rates of premature deaths. How can we do this as a, as a Senate? How can the government go ahead with a project like this when we know the impacts? We know the impacts on people in Darwin and we know the impacts on all of our health and well-being and the future of us and the future of future generations. Thank you, Senator Chisholm. Uh, thank you, Acting Deputy President, and I thank uh, Senator Pocock for this matter of urgency, and I rise to speak on it. Uh, the Albanese government will provide $1.5 billion in planned equity to support the development of the Middle Arm Precinct, together with $440 million for regional logistics hubs along key transport links to connect Catherine, Alice Springs and Tennant Creek to Darwin. Uh, and I would point out that this is an election commitment that the government made um, prior to the election last year. Um, so we very much see this as uh, delivering on an election commitment that we made to the Australian people. I would also add that uh, a couple of weeks ago I was in Tennant Creek uh, on uh, some government business and I did have the opportunity to talk to locals there about the opportunity that uh, the Middle Arm Precinct will provide, but also with those regional logistics hubs at the same time. Uh, and there is um, really strong interest in the local community uh, amongst traditional owners in the Sun Cable project uh, and the tremendous opportunity uh, that renewable projects will provide in the Northern Territory. Uh, so I, I think that there is um, strong support for this project um, within the Northern Territory, and they do see it as important in part of creating the jobs of the future to create long-term sustainable industries um, that can create reliable jobs that people know they can rely on and build a long-term future for themselves and their families in that area. So to be clear, the government's investment in Middle Arm is an investment in common user marine infrastructure that support industries critical to achieving the government's commitment to net zero, including specialist product wharves, modular offloading facilities for manufacturing and dredging of the shipping channel. It will also help position the Northern Territory and Northern Australia to take advantage of international demand for Australian clean energy. And we are confident that there is enormous opportunity uh, across the Northern Territory when it comes to that, uh, both creating jobs and economic opportunity. This is infrastructure that will support industries critical to meeting our commitments to net zero while generating jobs and economic opportunities across the Territory. The proposals include developing a hydrogen facility using solar energy to produce green hydrogen for domestic and export potential, or develop a green hydrogen hub which compromises green hydrogen and green ammonia production. Again, uh, plenty of opportunity for jobs and economic development. Or a critical minerals processing facility for use in energy, story, for use in energy storage batteries, or precursor battery materials and the manufacturing of these products, which again is a key priority of the federal government. But the truth is gas remains an important energy source for Australia and our trading partners during the transition to net zero and decarbonisation. A lower CO2 emissions liquefied natural gas export facility is also one of the proposals. The projects linked to Middle Arm will provide significant economic benefits and create an estimated 20,000 jobs in the Territory. It is, however, deeply disingenuous to ignore the facts, as some people have continued to do, and the claim that this is an investment in fracking it isn't. It is also disappointing that those people fail to engage in the detail of the proposition that the Australian Government has put to the Northern Territory Government. I understand there are a range of views and perspectives on this project. Whilst the Government remains committed to the project, 
we are also committed to working with the Northern Territory Government and the community to ensure the necessary assessments take place before the project proceeds. The Australian Government is committed to working with traditional owners and First Nations community as the pro proposal is developed further. The Australian Government's decision to make an equity investment in this project will allow us to work in partnership with the Northern Territory Government to ensure our vision is met. This is particularly important as new markets to process and export green hydrogen and energy transition components are established. Instead of handouts to private companies, we are investing in common use infrastructure to give all potential users the market, in the market the opportunity to grow and thrive. This government knows how important it is to deliver on our commitments to the Australian people by investing in enabling infrastructure that creates economic opportunity and jobs for the future of renewable energy and manufacturing. And we think that the Northern Territory deserves those opportunities as well. We know that we can take action on climate change and work towards our net zero commitments while creating jobs and opportunities. Uh, despite attempts by others to ignore the facts and the reality, this is the record of the Albanese government and it's one we are proud to deliver on and particularly deliver on for those people in the Northern Territory that rely on good quality jobs. Thank you. Senator, I can't get it out. And Dunny, um... Thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. I do feel for you with your um, current voice lost, although that means the interjections probably can't be reined in. But I, do, well, I am pleased to be able to um, say, no, not an invitation to the Australian Greens, but uh, all my Labor colleagues from Tasmania who shamefully voted against the forestry industry just in the last motion. But what we will turn to here is the motion, the urgency uh, matter before the Senate from Senator David Pocock uh, relating to the Middle Arm Industrial Precinct. Now, Anyone would think sometimes when you look at these matters before the Senate and listen to the um, claims that have been made about the coalition and to a degree when they're pretending to be pro-jobs and pro-economy, the Australian Labor Party, that we actually want to go about trashing the environment, that it's some hidden agenda, that there's something that we gain from doing that. The reality is no one wants to do that. Humans have an impact on the environment by their very nature of existence. We all drive cars that use fossil fuels. Some of us do. I notice uh, some of my colleagues do drive EVs. We uh, fly on planes. Uh, we use timber for uh, building houses. We eat fish. We eat meat. All of the things we do as humans has an impact on the environment. And as technology improves, we should minimise that impact. Now, I don't believe that Fossil fuels are in any way inconsistent with the notion of sustainable development. Because there is this problem we have here, the idea that we must just turn off the tap on gas or coal, which supports the great majority of energy generation in this country, the thing that powers our factories, that keeps uh, the lights on for a great majority of mainland states in particular. If we turn the tap off on these resources and what they do in terms of energy generation uh, and, of course, future exploration of such resources, what are we replacing it with? No one has been able to point to me the sustainable, baseload, dispatchable uh, and renewable alternative to what we are castigating here, and that is fossil fuels. It is an important part of the mix, and we cannot deny that. But I don't buy the claim that this is somehow, in supporting this project, that uh, the Albanese Labor government is rightly backing in. It was a project that we in government supported as well, because it is about economic opportunities for parts of Australia, in this case the Northern Territory, a part of the country we want to ensure has a strong economic future. And so I commend the government on their support of this project. I do have doubts about their capacity to deliver it, but we'll keep an eye on that over time, particularly with this ethereal project and property management branch in the Department of Finance. I'm struggling to figure out what they do uh, who will be managing this project, but we'll come back to that another time. The fact is it's an important project. It's an important part of uh, a suite of measures to support that economy, to access resources we need to have a functioning economy and keep the lights on. That's not a bad thing. But these concerns around sea level rise, which uh, made me think of something that was said back in 2007 by my good friend and former senator, Dr Bob Brown. And he went down to Salamanca on Hobart's waterfront and he painted a red line on the side of uh, those beautiful sandstone buildings in Salamanca Place. Quite the crime, in my view, but uh, he said that because of John Howard's 
light touch carbon tax at the time, however he described it, that sea level rises due to global warming were going to be four to six metres higher than they were today. Now, that was 16 years ago. Uh, and uh, last time I went down to the Salamanca markets, the waves were not lapping at the first floor windows of Salamanca. And so I have to say we must be cautious about alarmism. Yes, take note of warning signs, but respond appropriately. Don't shut down the economy and deprive Australians of an opportunity to have a strong economic future. There are competing interests here and we need to manage them in the best interests of our country, including the Northern Territory, where we do have large numbers of disadvantaged Australians. So giving them economic opportunities, as well as managing the environment, uh, they're not inconsistent. We can do both, but we must accept that in order to grow an economy, sometimes we do have an impact on the environment. We should minimise that, but we can't pretend we can't uh, we won't impact on the environment or shouldn't impact on the environment and it won't come at a cost. To do both is important. To do both well is what a mature government does, to make sure that Australians have all of the opportunities that are available to them, uh, that they have the best standard of living. So we can't support this uh, matter of urgency. Thank you, Senator Dunningham. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, Acting Deputy President. This motion isn't just about another of the 116 coal and gas projects in the pipeline. This is about Labor handing out public money to build what would be Australia's biggest ever gas export terminal, used, using gas piped from Australia's biggest ever fracking field. Now, at the last election, the Australian people kicked out the coalition and their gas-fired recovery, which was their bizarre centrepiece for Australia's COVID response. But this new government has regurgitated former Prime Minister Morrison's gas-fired recovery with one of the single biggest contributions to expanding the toxic and dangerous gas industry. $1.9 billion of taxpayer money will be thrown at the development of the Middle Arms site in Darwin Harbour to enable the expansion of Australia's gas export and petrochemical industry. For months, the Albanese government has tried to pretend that they've got nothing to do with enabling fossil fuels with public money, never mind the uh, billions in fossil fuel subsidies that continue to be in their budget. But they say, oh, it's for solar and batteries and hydrogen. It's a sustainable development precinct, they said. The word petrochemical was wiped from government websites. They refused to mention the word gas with the minister instead calling them low emissions hydrocarbons, which is greenwashing at an epic scale that Woodside and Santos would be proud of. But two weeks ago, US fracking company Tamboran announced to the ASX that they had rights to a part of the Middle Arm site to build a gas export terminal that would export 20 million tonnes per annum, bigger than any currently in existence in Australia. So now the Labor government's cover is blown. It is a monumental fossil fuel subsidy. And now that we know that this money is enabling fossil fuel expansion, the Albanese government cannot proceed with $1.9 billion of, a, of public money hand out to a gas company in the middle of a climate crisis. All of the coal, oil and gas facilities currently in operation have us on track to break through the safe one and a half degree limit. We have to phase these out, not keep them going. This puts their 2050 target completely out of reach. Thank you, the government Senator has Waters. to choose. Your time has expired. Senator Orman Payne. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. The rapid expansion of Middle Arm will set off a carbon bomb that will destroy Australia's chance of hitting net zero. And I am desperately concerned that in the process of setting off this carbon bomb in the Beedaloo, the people of the Northern Territory are going to be the ones left holding the bag. My own community of Gladstone in central Queensland bears the scars of fossil fume, fuel boom and bus cycles. When fossil market, fuel markets crash, which they always do, these corporations don't stick around to make sure that the community is supported. They suck up resources, they pay off their party-affiliated lobbyists and they vanish. 
Northern Australia needs genuine, sustainable, long-term investment in its future. With Labor wanting to top up the NAIF with an additional $2 billion, they must also rule out using it to funnel money towards projects like Middle Arm. The Northern Australia Infrastructure Fund is an Abbott-era relic through which the Morrison government tried to fund the Adani coal mine and which could yet be used to provide funding for Tambourine's gas export hub in Darwin and fracking the Beedaloo Basin. The ball is in Labor's court to rule out public spending on gas and coal, including from the NAIF. Thank you. Senator Roberts. Thank you. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I thank Senator Pocock for his motion. I question why we need a dedicated export facility for the Beedaloo Basin natural gas. Australia has 10 natural gas export terminals, two in Darwin. Beedaloo output is expected to be huge, and much of it should be used here in Australia, not exported. Australia's parasitic malinvestments in wind and solar is destroying our energy generation capacity. Gas generation is essential to keeping the lights on, while commercial hot gas, hot water and cooking are likewise essential. Everyday Australians will never accept the insane idea that Australia should stop using gas. This is despite the advertising spend on climate campaigns designed to do one thing, line the pockets of climate carpetbaggers, like those funding Teal Senator David Pocock's campaign. Gas connections are being banned in new builds and existing lines will be ripped out because at some point we will need to recycle that copper, since world production will never be able to supply the copper needed for UN net zero. My own building that I rent in Campbell, in Canberra, sent out a note to owners this week saying, the body corporate has been told they will need to remove the gas hot water system, rip out the pipes and remove all gas appliances by 2035. Homeowners will have to pay the bill, likely over a million dollars all up. This is a brand new building. What a waste. On one hand, the green ideologues will require owners to spend tens of thousands of dollars per unit to pull out near new hot water heating gas lines and equipment and replace it with less efficient solutions. And then the ideologues will complain, rents have gone up. Of course rents are going up. Green ideology is forcing rents up by forcing landlords' costs up. How the climate lobby not connecting the dots here? How? How much more productive capacity are we going to rip out to replace with shiny new electric capacity that doesn't do the job as well as gas? Never mind the environmental waste of tossing millions of stoves into the landfill where they can rot beside broken and toxic solar panels and wind turbine blades. And these panels and these people were worried about plastic straws. Please. One gas provider proudly claims on their website they're banning gas to save the planet. No, you are depriving Australians of our own gas so you can sell it for a larger profit into an energy-starved world market a situation that the government's price cap on gas made worse because it makes export more profitable than domestic sale in a disrupted supply market. Meanwhile, another energy retailer is advertising on their website, quote, listen to this, we all like to do our bit for the planet, so you'll be happy to know you can reduce your household carbon emissions by switching from appliances running on grid electricity to natural gas. It goes on to say, quote, gas is the perfect partner to solar and that by connecting your home to natural gas, you can lower your carbon emissions by up to 77% in Victoria compared to electric cooking and hot water appliances. Which is it? Which is it? Is gas a perfect partner to solar or is it environmental vandalism? Another energy provider's website has a spiel about renewable gas, which turns out to be hydrogen. Hydrogen is not even a viable fuel yet, and it takes huge amounts of energy to, to make it out of water, and yet they have to had to rebrand it already. That must be some sort of record. What a mess climate baggers have created through their greens and teal shills in the Senate. What I have not heard in the gas debate at all is a major reason gas is better than electricity, and that is transmission loss. Electricity suffers transmission loss getting from the point of generation miles out in the countryside into homes in the city. Gas does not suffer a transmission loss. Factor that into energy calculations and electrification becomes an even worse idea. Banning Australians from accessing our own natural resource will, while allowing our gas to be flogged off to international bidders at a premium 
just as our coal is shipped to China, where it powers the solar panel and wind turbine export industry that the Greens and Teal Senator David Pocock worship, with no hint of irony. Meanwhile, a rapidly increasing global energy market values and prefers hydrocarbon fuels, coal, oil and gas. The West are deindustrializing, while the rest of the world, including China, India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, are industrializing using our gas and our coal. The war, war on gas is a heist of our nation's natural resources. It's sacrificing economic prosperity and the opportunity for advancement for all Australians in the name of a corrupt United Nations sustainability agenda that sustains nobody except the billionaires behind it all. It's wealth transfer from we, the people, to globalist billionaire elites and globalist predators like BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street. One Nation rejects the electrification of Australia's gas supply and questions the middle arm project. Natural gas must stay as a choice Thank for you. all Australians. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Cox. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise to speak in strong support of this MPU submitted by Senator David Pocock. And my crossbench colleague is 100 per cent right. There are unacceptable climate and health risks posed by this project that is receiving taxpayer money, and I thank him for bringing this topic to the Senate today. Let's be clear, Middle Arm is a dirty petrochemical plant and gas terminal, and it's going to impact on the cultural heritage in this area because petro petroglyphs have actually been found in the Darwin Harbour. And the health of those also living by, uh, close by and the climate. It absolutely cannot go ahead if this government is serious about its emissions reductions target and maintaining Australia's obligations under the Paris Agreement. We are in a climate crisis, and the Greens have reminded the government of this many times, and we will continue to stand to do so. And it is estimated that this precinct will generate 15 million tonnes of carbon emissions per year, increasing the emissions in the Northern Territory by 75 per cent. So let that just sink in for a moment, that this project alone would increase the emissions just in the Northern Territory by 75 per cent. So, so much for the 43 per cent emissions reduction target that we legislated. Further, Middle Arm could increase the industrial pollution by over 500 per cent, raising serious health concerns, particularly for the community of Palmerston, which is only three kilometres away. The Greens have some serious concerns about this project and the potential implications both on First Nations cultural heritage, the environment and also on the climate. Middle Arm, the Beetaloo Basin and the Barossa projects are all linked. Gas from the Beetaloo Basin and Barossa will be funnelled straight through to Middle Arm, and there are three climate bombs that we absolutely cannot afford to set off. These projects alone will blow the government's emission reduction target, wreck the surrounding environment for the projects, and both the Beetaloo and the Barossa projects are already facing opposition from the traditional owners of Larrakia and the Tiwi Islands. So if this government wants to push ahead with Middle Arm, Barossa and the Beetaloo, they will be doing so against the wishes of traditional owners, against the scientific advice and countless organisations, both nationally and internationally, who know it's time to move away from fossil fuels. Thank you, Senator Cox. The question before the chair is the motion moved by Senator David Pocock. Those of that opinion who support the motion say aye. Those against say no. I no. think the noes have it. it. Is a division required? Uh, ring, ring the bells for four minutes.
lock the doors. The ayes will move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. The question before the chair is the motion moved by Senator David Pocock. I appoint Senator uh, Pocock teller for the ayes and Senator Scar teller for the noes. There being 12 ayes and 28 noes, the results are the motion is lost.